Um, I was the director of research education for all the residents at Loma Linda, and uh, we've been doing research, in fact, from the first day we met, yeah, probably, uh, because we really think that it's critical to be able to validate facts, validate information. And what that means is, is this thing in front of us truly representing what it's purporting to represent? Or can we find a rep true representation of, of, of a relationship? And that's critical. In fact, that's critical, not just in, you know, nutrition and, and science in general, but in life in general. There's so much information out there. And what happens a lot of times, we get drowned in the deluge of information. We lose our direction. In fact, you can be in completely opposite direction from the truth. If you don't have a systematic way where everybody can agree, that at least they can agree on the way and the method. And then the way and the validity can be determined. And in fact, that's the beauty of science and research. Several people who are not at all connected may actually use different uh, data points to actually validate the same point. That gives it more strength. Beauty of science and research is just that. If we can get more people to study data and find the relationships, and then we know that it's true. Right. Then we know the direction we're taking, in our case, when it comes to brain health, is truly going to help people's brain get better. That's basically it. And, and it's profoundly important. And anybody who's giving people the tools, the methodology, the, the, the systems to actually um, achieve that, that, that relationship or be part of that relationship or actually democratize and spread the ability to find that validity is probably doing the most important work uh, as far as you know our daily life is concerned um, and our um, nutritional and science work anywhere out there. Yeah, and I also think that it's very important for us to look at different angles of research. Um, a lot of times we have a very one-sided view of what the science shows us, but uh, things, for example, um, translation of data in a community or applicability of a certain pattern in a population is incredibly important because yes, we may have the data, but how it's applied and how it results in different population also needs to be discussed and shared with everyone. And so um, having that opportunity to look at data and look at research that talks about application and translation and sharing that widely with everyone is a very important part of public health. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think that we have slipped into this paradigm of research being very binary, where it's, you know, it's either right or wrong. It's an interventional trial and it either has a positive or a negative outcome, but especially in the research around plant-based nutrition and lifestyle medicine, it's a spectrum. And yeah. so I think what you're saying is absolutely correct. <clears throat> what we need to do is build a credible knowledge base of information. And so to that point, you know, what are some of the, the research points that you're looking for the, in the future? And what are some of the studies that you think we still need to add to the database to be more credible? Uh, as Aisha said, um, we are focused on translation. We've done the work as far as the molecular work. We did the lab work. Uh, I worked at NIH. I actually worked at Columbia University and, and, and uh, fMRI studies at UCSD. We now believe that when it comes to our area, which is lifestyle, when it comes to prevention of uh, neurological diseases, we actually coined the term uh, preventive neurology. I think we now have enough data, like you said, the general direction is known. The little nuances can be found. Uh, to translate. And there's no translation or very little translation out there. And the kind of translation that exists is very binary. It doesn't take into account each community's unique characteristics. And those characteristics are not small matters. If you don't take those whole characteristics, you will have what we call, you know, a type two error or you know, you, the, the, the data works, but the outcome fails. And you, and then you say, oh, this is, you know, the, this data uh, does not work. No, we didn't take the characteristics of a community into consideration to apply it. So for us, translation is everything. Our work in the communities and multiple communities is to see how we can translate what we know as far as nutrition is concerned, and what we know as far as uh, movement and exercise is concerned, into each communities in their own way. And how do we do it in a way where it's not cost prohibitive? 
that it actually is uh, brought in by the community itself. And most importantly, it's not a contrived add-on. It becomes part of the community's character and uh, core. That's, that I think, one of the most important areas we can work on at this point. Yeah, thank you. That is, that's really wise. And that's something that you don't hear very often uh, in the research setting. You know, I think we have become biased toward interventional trials, um, but translational uh, research is really, really critical. And uh, I think that's where the, the database needs to head as well. So thank you for bringing that to light and emphasizing that point. And, um, and, so I guess kind of, just apply, go ahead. But, and and some of the mean? things that you and your journal and, and, uh, and, and some of our friends that, that we know are doing, which is valuable, is to know that it's not just about randomized clinical trials. There are a lot of the nutritional studies you can't truly validate just with randomized clinical trials because a lot of the outcomes have to be long term and in larger populations. And there's no way you have the budget to do just randomized clinical trials. So that's where the variety of studies come in. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, by by gleaning from all the studies, we can get a much clearer picture like a stained glass window. Right. It all yeah. it forms together to create this beautiful image at the end. Absolutely. Uh, so one final question for you. You all have been amazing supporters in every way of the journal from, you know, helping to, um, you know, donate to get it started to, you know, guiding us as advisors to reviewing journals. And we've been amazing. I just want to thank you for that at the outset. Uh, but how do you see the International Journal of Disease Reversal and Prevention kind of fitting in? And, you know, maybe even for my, um, you know, for my benefit, like, what do you think we can do better to um, to help expand the knowledge and, and uh, access to good research. Well, I guess um, just the name, <laughs> the name is inviting. The name connotes uh, prevention. The name connotes uh, public health. And I think there are, you know, there are some journals that do very good work, but we need more. We need amplification of this concept and making it available for different universities, different doctors, different settings to get involved and to share their information is also very welcoming. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's something that we we definitely need. Um, as always, um, challenging our notions about health and wellness, challenging our notions about what we know from nutrition, and keeping it evidence based is the most important thing. So I congratulate you for for uh, making sure that you've highlighted the importance of all these aspects and make it available in a very easy way for people to share their information. Yeah, thanks. We have an amazing team, as you know, Dr. Kim Williams, um, Katie Adir, who's our chief managing editor, um, and many others. It's been a, an amazing team that have really towed the high line on credibility and making sure that uh, that we're presenting the, the evidence in the best light and, and discriminating to find the, the best studies. So uh, I thank you for that. It's a, no, it's a, it's a pleasure. Uh, discernment and the ability to discern those differences is critical. And you guys have actually at the core started with that those concepts. So we really uh, think that that's the right direction. The next thing is the fact that prevention is, 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 is not very well known in the medical realm. And so although it's becoming more and more popular, it's uh, you guys are or we consider ourselves part of your uh, community. Uh, are some of the beginning uh, or, um, journals or beginning science-based organizations that's really highlighting the concept of reversal and prevention. And, and that's why it's critical that we do it right and, and, and uh, starting it properly. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I thank you for that. And that's our vision as well. You know, what's the concept of true prevention? How do we truly prevent disease from forming in such a way that it optimizes the biochemistry of our bodies? And from the, you know, that translation, how do we optimize life and the quality mm -hmm. of life? So exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, I just want to thank you for your time. I know you're busy today. I thank you for taking a few minutes with us. And uh, I just want to appreciate all that you have done, not only for me personally and for the journal and the Plantrition Project, but for the entire community. You know, you really you really have a selfless view of, um, of life and the investments that you're making into underserved um, communities and you know, uh, populations at risk is really admirable. And I just wanna recognize that and appreciate that about you. 
Thank you so much. It's a privilege to be in that position. Thank you. Thank you so much, Scott. You're welcome. Yeah. And I thank you for watching everyone. And uh, just thank you for taking a few minutes to join us and for all of the support and for your continued work. You know, this is uh, changing the world takes all of us. And the exciting thing that uh, I think inspires me and it makes me passionate about healthcare providers is that one healthcare provider reaches thousands of lives in a career. And so by each of us beginning to gain a greater view of the opportunity that we have on a daily basis to change lives individually, but to actually transform communities and nations in the world uh, is really inspiring and should hopefully get us out of bed in the morning with a greater vision. So I just want to thank you for joining us. And uh, again, you know, if you uh, are interested in being a reviewer for the journal, we're looking for no new reviewers uh, in uh, specialties in medicine. So please contact us. And if you want to support the ongoing work of the International Journal of Disease Reversal and Prevention, you can do so online at plantfishingproject.org. Um, and that 100% of the donations go to support the, the ongoing work of the journal. So thanks, uh, Dr. Dean and Aisha for joining us today. I uh, look forward to talking to you again and blessings in all of your work. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank, Thank you, you for so having much. us.